So on this episode of Smoke and Barrel Show, we're comparing two popular classic revolvers. So I'm not necessarily a revolver guy, Ray, but there's something very classic and alluring about revolvers, the mechanical nature of them. Can you tell us a little bit about the two revolvers yeah. we have today? Yeah, so you know, today we have you know the classic Smith & Wesson 686 and the really popular because of the walking dead. This is Rick Grimes' gun, the Cole Python. Pop you know, culture. Yeah. Um, so, you know, let me start with the 686 first. So the 686 was first introduced around the 1980s. It might have been right on 1980. Um, but, you know, these two revolvers, they're kind of rivals. Um, they're very, very similar. They're both double action. You know, let me hold up. Let me check this first. Say yeah. All right. They're both double action, meaning that you can just pull the trigger and single action, which means that you can, you know, prime it and then pull the trigger for a lighter trigger pull. Um, so, you know, from looks wise, aesthetically, you know, comparing these two guns, I mean, something that you can tell is one, they look really similar, but there are some differences that you'll notice. The Python has that really popular rib barrel up top um, to help shed that weight where the 686 doesn't. Um, so, the Python actually was first introduced sometime in the 1950s. They stopped production around like 2005, and then they reintroduced it right when uh, COVID hit in 2020. So that's what this one is. Um, so let me talk about the 686 first. Um, so 686, you know, the for the cylinder release, it's a pushing mechanism in order to pop that cylinder out. And then for the cylinder lock, it actually has two. So it has one on the front, and then your classic one right here on the bottom. So let me pull that out, so you can see that this cylinder lock right here, oh, and then one right here. There's a little detent. There's two little detents. Yeah, there. yeah, and also just you know, let me just you know chime in with a little bit of revolver etiquette. You know, you see in the movies, you see like the bad guys they like spin the revolver and then like snap it in. Don't do that. That's a good point. Yeah, yeah. But I know a lot of people love to do that, especially when they look at a gun for the first time and it just pisses off all the shop owners because, you know, that little thing is what's holding the cylinder and it's going to eventually bend it and weaken it. So the 686, you know, the trigger is, it controls the whole cylinder. It's very, very, you can hear the clicks on the wall. That two, three, pow. That tactile yeah. sound is very... Yeah, very, very responsive, you know. Um, and cool thing is, so right now, let me start again. The cylinder's revolving, and I broke, right? But I can continue to go to engage that cylinder, which is which is a nice feature. Because let's say you're pointing at a target, you're revolving that cylinder, but you're like, wait, 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 let me take a break. You know, you can you kind of control the whole thing ah. in a mid-roll. Um, the double action trigger, I think you weighed it, the trigger pull came in at around 10 pounds? About a 10 pound double action pull. 10 pound double action. Now, comparing these two, I prefer the trigger pull of the Python personally. But the double action or the single action? Double action. Okay. But the single action on the 686 is, that's just money. And what did it come in at? The weight of it? The single action for the 686 was a two, a low three pound pull. Low three pound pull. Okay. Okay. Yeah. But, you know, the, com the common uh, features between these two things is you have the full underlug as well, which adds to the aesthetics and also add that weight to help you kind of mitigate that recoil. Um, like, for example, if you watch like the Smith & Wesson, like those little J-frames, sometimes um, the ejector rod just hangs freely and it's prone to getting like bent up. But let me talk about the Python real quick. So Python, initial first difference is for a cylinder release, where the 686, you had to push it in, this one's a pull. So if you're shooting, you want competition, as you are going to release the rounds, you want to pull it at the same time to get that cylinder release. Whereas the 686, some people prefer it more where you can just push it and that's release it. That's such a subtle, that's yeah. a small, subtle yeah, it relation. Is. Yeah. And then also for the cylinder lock, you'll notice that it doesn't have that front one like the 686 does. So the only thing that locks in this Colt Python is this right here. Um, so you definitely don't want to be doing that, that stuff and then pop, you know, because you're just going, you're going to jack it up. So, and also, can you take out that cylinder real quick for me, Ho? So when, so this ejector rod is what causes the rounds to come out, mm -hmm. the brass casings to fall out. So you'll notice that 686, push it all the way down. 
It has a full length ejector rod, where the Python is only a half range. Mm, interesting. So, yeah, one other consideration with Python is when you are getting ready to reload, you need to make sure you pop that out real hard and fast for those rounds to get out. Where at 686, you kind of have more play because all the rounds are going to fall out. Now, the double action on this, so I don't know if you saw Wilson Combat's uh, most recent video about the Colt Python. So, you know, Bill Wilson is, you know, he started out competing with the Colt Python. You know, he's a huge Colt Python advocate. And then uh, he actually just released some sites for the Python as well, because we'll go into that later, but there is a huge flaw with this rear sight on the Python. But uh, the double action on this is just glass. That is so smooth. But unlike the 686, if you pull that trigger, you get those mechanical clicks. It is very, this mechanical clicking yeah. is very satisfying. So with the Python, you can't do that. So I did it midway, right? It, it just it just doesn't work. So if I'm at that point, it just, it, just, it, it doesn't work. So you can pull the trigger really quickly to set it up. But if you don't pull the trigger after you set up the cylinder for the next round, it'll move right onto the next cylinder. Oh, yeah. so you so, skip a round. Yeah, so you'll skip that round. So that's something to consider about the Cole Python. But double action on this, you can't, you can't beat it. This is so smooth, this thing's just money. But the single action on it is, it's kind of heavy, it's not that nice, honestly. Yeah. And then also, you know, how I like to shoot revolvers, and I like to get that high purchase, high grip, you know, on that firearm, you know? And if I try to put it in single action mode, my hand is covering the actual hammer, whereas on a 686, it doesn't do that. Let's talk about the triggers a little bit. Yeah. Uh, and I w I'd like to know which which one of these triggers you prefer between the two. So a lot of firearms these days are striker fire, completely different yeah. from this hammer. Right. Uh, my go-to uh, handgun uh, is a SIG 226, which is a double action, single mm -hmm. action. So I don't actually don't mind the double action, single action. Some, yeah. some people who primarily shoot striker fired right don't don't like this long double action pull yeah so between comparing these two i was able to get some trigger time with mm -hmm. you uh and do you have a personal preference on this the double action or the single action of one versus another yeah yeah so i definitely prefer the python just because of that glassiness for because both you prefer the the trigger for both double action and single action for the python actually for this double action i prefer the python Single action, I prefer the 686. So if you cock that hammer back, it's true. It's you notice, true. you can see how this hammer is not in the way of the grip at all. So I can continue to maintain the same uh, grip on the firearm. And then the single action is actually much more lighter. This is very light, very yeah. crisp. And the double action, what was the weight on the double action on the, this? That was an eight, eight pound. Eight pound. How about the single action? Three to four pounds. Yeah, so just both ways. I mean, this has lighter double action but a heavier single action. This one has a heavier double action, lighter single action, but I, I don't really shoot single action anyway. And then also, you know, when I'm shooting, I'm not gonna, you know, put the revolver in single action and shoot it, you know? If it's like a real life situation where someone's coming to attack me, I'm not gonna, I'm just gonna shoot at them. Right. Yeah. And then, oh yeah, so, so sorry, before the next one, the one thing I want to mention was also, if you look at the tip of the barrel on both of these, this one actually has a crown barrel which is actually an enhancement to the pre original Python. The original Python was more like the 686 where it was just mm -hmm. flat, but Colt took the time to put in that crown barrel to save that uh, tip of that barrel so it doesn't get uh, scuffed up or anything like that. And for you know those that don't know, the tip of the barrels, uh, making sure that that thing is unscratched, smooth, and Hoke can attest to that is really important um, because if that tip of the barrel is marked or has a dent in it, it'll throw off your accuracy totally. Clean tips, everyone. Yes, clean tips. Tip your, keep your tip clean. So yeah, and then uh, just one thing I want to say about the Python was Colt did an amazing job with this, um, but one bad thing about it that I don't like, one is a single action, but a huge mark on the Python is this rear sight. Mm -hmm. So when I first got it, you know, I was shooting, I've been shooting revolvers for a long time. You know, I'm a revolver in 1911 guy. So when I first got it, it was, it was great. You know, I zeroed it in real quick, it was great. But then as I shot more and more, like every like 20 to 50 rounds, I'll notice that my shots will kind of like veer off to the side. Interesting. I was like, what in the world is going on? And it turns out that this rear sight, it just kind of like floats around. Oh. Where at 686, they did, that, that's a solid sight. 
you know, which is why that Wilson Combat coming out with that site is crazy. It's crucial. Um, it'll fix this problem. So I actually have to lock tight this one in, which kind of sucks. Um, but now, now it's good. But I don't shoot past 25 yards anyway with a revolver. So when I got the trigger time, and like you said, at a range, you can switch it over to single action, mm -hmm. and you have that much lighter, much lighter pull on the 686. So yeah. if I were to pick only by action, then I would pick the single action for the 686. Mm. It's so much lighter and uh, lighter and shorter. Yeah. But overall, I like the Python. I'll, I'll take the trade off. It's got a slightly heavier single action pull, mm -hmm. but I'll take that trade off because outside of a range, I don't have. I'm not. I'm likely not going to cock the hammer or stage right. the stage right. the hammer and then shoot in double action or single action. So overall, I would say I prefer the Colt Python. It's got a uh, it's got a lighter double action pull. I will take the trade off of the slightly heavier uh, single action. Oh really? Yeah. I'm I'm the same way. I actually I prefer the Python. So I'm at a loss right now a little bit because, you know, we just did our Prodigy episode where Mike yeah. actually chose a Prodigy as his first gun. So between this Cole Python and this Springfield Prodigy, I, I don't know which one I like more. So, like, Oh, so you're still torn between Yeah, them. yeah. I mean, this is this is one of my favorite guns. And, you know, I'm, I always carry a backpack around with me wherever I go. You know, and I, I love hiking. And I love the outdoors. So this is actually what I carry with me because, I mean, so these two revolvers, they're both, you know, uh, mid frame revolvers, um, but the metal RG and everything's gone so good. Um, where you know these things can shoot 357 magnums, no problem. Like they'll, they'll shoot 357 magnum all day. So you know if you do run into like a giant animal or something like that, I mean this is gonna, this is actually gonna help you versus a nine. If you shot a bear with a nine, I mean you're just gonna piss off the bear, you know. <laughs> but this one will actually you know stop the bear, you know, so you can you know get away to a safe spot. So, Ray, you said you prefer the Python over the 686? I do. I do, you know, because uh, that was actually my first revolver. I, I still love it. I still love it. It this Python barely just beats the 686. And, you know, the Python just, it just has that classic look, you know? Mm. You know, so. The chrome finish is nice. Love that. Love that. Love that. And then one thing that I wish that they did to the Python compared to the old one was, so the grips, Altamont made these grips. They're beautiful. They're amazing grips. Do you have a preference of wood over rubber? I like shooting rubber, but for this Python, like I'll, I'll take the wood just because, you know, I'm kind of like, uh, I'm just that kind of guy. You know, looks do play a part in the firearm that I carry, you know? Cool factor. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Hogue does make rubber grips. I'm actually thinking about getting a pair because, you know, I don't want to ruin these grips, you know? Um, I can preserve it for as long as I want. And they're all sold out of these grips. So I can't get another pair. But... One thing that the old grips had was, so this checkering was actually raised. Hmm. So I'll just get a better grip. And then the back was actually checkered or lined, one of those. Um, yeah, so that's that's something that I wish that they did. Again, that person prefers ergonomics. Maybe some people would like the rubber grip. Yeah, the... yeah like rubber grips definitely feel better. Okay. This 100% feels better in my hand. But surprisingly, I shoot better with this. I mean, both these revolvers I mean shoot way more accurately than I ever could. Um, but yeah, I do shoot slightly better with this one. Um, I didn't notice any particular recoil differences between the two. Yeah. Like, yeah. Equal? Yeah. They're pretty much the same. Um, be they are both, uh, Smith and Wesleyan calls that their L frame revolver. Um, but they're both mid frame revolvers. Okay. Um, recoils the same. And in comparison between the two, if I could like pick and choose features like you were doing with mm -hmm. the double action single, definitely would take the single action from that. Keep this double action, but that's glass. Amazing. Be this comes at a price point of 1500. Cole did an amazing job me you know, bringing it to that price point. I had no idea how they did it, but that's amazing. But if I could seal some features from the Smith & Wesson to the Python, I'd also, st if you look at the, the top, you'll notice that the Smith & Wesson actually has those lines on top. So what that does is whenever you're outside, and when you're outside, it does make a huge difference. Uh, I didn't think that would, but I guess just because these are so polished. I mean, this one's a brushed stainless steel. This one's a polished stainless steel. When you're out in the sun, that's someone will get you, you know? So this line, what it actually does is it deflects that sunlight. So it doesn't get in your way when you're aiming. Whereas the Python, they just put on that matte finish. I wish that they did something like this. That is kind of nice. But you know what? I'm I'm the same as you. Like, I, I prefer this Python. They did a great job with it overall. So, Ray, you mentioned the price for the Colt Python. What's the Smith & Wesson 
686 rent. Yeah, usually, you know, you can find it anywhere from between like 800 to a thousand dollars. Oh, it's cheaper than the yeah, market. yeah, it is cheaper. Um, but you know what? Overall, they're all they're both really, really good revolvers. You can't go wrong with you know one or the other. You know, I mentioned Bill Wilson uses Cole Python, right? That's what he started competing with. Well, Jerry Mitchell, you know, the world's fastest revolver shooter, you know, he's a Smith and Wesson guy, and yes, he he's if you look at some of his video videos, he's amazing with the 686. I mean, you can't go wrong with either one. I mean, they're both reliable. I mean, and they're just like uh, you know, if you want to buy a car, you know, you can have two same level of cars, but you know, one the features are just a little different, and this this is kind of all that is. Thank you for joining us on this episode of Smoke and Barrel Show. Please like and subscribe, and let us know in the comment section which one you like and why.